Statistics and Excel, normal distribution heights of baseball players, data example part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. If you do have access to this workbook, we now have six tabs down below. The two green example tabs in essence answer key. The two blue practice tabs having pre-formatted cells in them so you could get down to the heart of the practice problem. The two white blank tabs are where we started with just our data set and a blank workbook so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. This is of course where we will continue at this time. Let's do a recap of what we did in the past. We started out with our blank data over here. We have data related to baseball, so baseball statistics, which you can get in different places. If you don't have any data sets, you might want to go to Kaggle.com as one resource. And you, there's also a lot of uh, baseball related data that you might be able to pick up to practice with. We then uh, sorted this information, created a table from it, picked up what we wanted from it, which are the heights, and we pulled the heights over to our blank tab as our starting data point. So we could just work with this information. We picked up the mean, the standard deviation, the median, the mode. We noted that the mean is similar to the median as well as the mode, which is an indication that our data set is following a bell-shaped type of curve, so might be able to approximate it with a bell curve. So we then plotted the bell curve, figuring out the bottom and top point of our x's. So we can plot out our x's, which are going to be on the you know the x uh, axis here. And then we used our uh, norm dot dist function, and we also then compared the actual data in a frequency distribution and look at the percent of the total, compare that to the normal distribution so that we see this chart. So now we can see that they're pretty similar in nature, which again is an indication that that bell curve will give us some predictive power. We looked at the difference, which also indicates that there's a fairly small differences that the bell curve will give us some predictive power. So now what we wanna do is think about how can we create a, a bell curve with an area type of graph and then think about how we can kind of draw a line so we could see the above part of the bell curve, the below part of the bell curve, and like in between type of questions. So let me show you what I mean here. We, we could ask questions such as, what if uh, P of X is greater than, greater than, or equal to, let's say, 79, and close that out. Now, in order to plot this, I'm going to, let's, let's actually bring this down here, and I'm just gonna say above this X is gonna be uh, 79, or let's, actually, I'll just keep it where I was. I'll just pull this back up. 
what I want to do is make this dynamic so I can change this 79 and it will change this label and we'll also use this label up top so this is our fancy label here I'm gonna double click on it and in the front of it I'm gonna say equals I'm gonna put quotes around this because this is the text all the way from the P to the equal sign I'm gonna end that quote so that means it's just gonna show up as just uh, the text then I'm gonna connect it to with an and and then this 79 I want to refer to this cell you can't see it anymore because it's covered up but I'm gonna select this 79 put my cursor down here and then up to that cell so now that 79 is in that cell so I'm gonna replace it with that D13 which will give me the 79 and make it dynamic and then I'm gonna say and to connect it again to the last bit of text quotes which is that bracket quotes and then close it up so now it's dynamic so I can make this 80 and my title turns to 80 right now if I was to if I was to do that now I'm looking for everything that is uh, above 79 so if I was to go here you would think it would be from here to here and you can highlight that it comes out to uh, uh, 1.78 but I can't do it. I can't do it that way. I can't just sum it up because uh, we need the area under the curve. So if I was to do this, I would have to say one minus the norm dot dist. So I can then say, okay, uh, this is going to be equal to one minus norm dot dist. And then I can pick up the X, which is going to be this and then comma the mean is the 7370 and then comma the standard deviation 2.3 comma and it needs to be cumulative therefore true or one and close it up and enter so let's percentify that home tab number group percentify add a couple decimals so it's close to to this but uh not well it's pretty close but not exactly the same right now I would like to see that pictorially in a graph. So I'd like to be able to plot that pictorially. So let's also add the Z here. And because the Z is also a common type of reference to indicate how close someone is to that middle point. So it's a great term. And so I'm going to then make this white, black, white, and uh, let's center it. And so the Z is gonna be calculated as, we're gonna say equals brackets, we're gonna pick up each individual X minus the mean and then close up the brackets and divide it by the standard deviation. So it's kind of given us how far out we are. The X is in terms of standard deviation in the, from the mean. <laughs> so let's double click and copy that down. Ah, oh, wait a sec. I can't do that. Something is wrong. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong what happened these two numbers need to be absolute referenced so the ones that are in column d so i'm going to put my cursor in d2 f4 on the keyboard d3 f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the d's the twos and the threes enter put my cursor back on it then double click the fill handle and boom so then you could see the middle point is at 7370 so between here and here 73 and 74 that's where you're at that middle point. That's where the Z-score would be at, you know, the mean at zero. Okay, so then I'm also gonna say this is gonna be equal to the, uh, uh, this dynamic reference. And now we have this dynamic reference up top and we can plot it as well. Let's make that uh, black, white, and center it. All right, so now let's actually start to build our graph. So I'm gonna build my normal distribution graph using the percentages over here from the norm.dist. I'll put my cursor on the title, control shift down, make sure you don't pick up the 100 shift up. So we just have our data insert on the left. We're gonna say insert this time an area graph. And so I'm gonna pick this one, drop down area, something like that. So I'll pick that one up. I'll pull that to the right and then I'm going to try to try to make this a little bit more fancy. So I'm just going to remove the title so I can make it kind of as big as I can. And then the, the bottom X is not correct because we want to start it not at one, but at 64. So I'm going to go up to my chart design, my data, and then on my X, which is on this side, edit it 
and then make it's a little finicky so make sure you're picking it up here control shift down don't pick up the total shift up and then enter and so there we have it so it looks like it's picking them up correctly over here so i'm going to say okay so there we have it so that we could see that that middle point is where we would expect at like the 74 and then you've got this kind of normal distribution that looks about right now sometimes we might want to have the z score at the bottom as well so i can see the x in terms of x's as well as x's in terms of the z uh the z score so that would be kind of neat to have so it's a little tricky uh, to do that sometimes and sometimes we have to add it'd be useful to add another column in order to get that uh, z score uh, a second x uh, down here a second x horizontal so to do that let's first get some other data this is going to be the p of x is greater than or equal to 79 so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to say that i want to pick this number up when it gets to 79 or higher right and, the, and everything else i want to be blank so i could do it this way i could just say well, okay well this is going to be equal to this up to here and then plot that that would work but I want to do it so I can change it automatically by just changing this number. So I could use I can use a logic function to do that, which would look like this. So I'm going to go up top and say if equals if brackets. Here's my logical test. If this number is uh, greater than uh, is greater than or equal to the this number 79 i'm going to f4 that number because i want it to be absolute f4 dollar sign absolute reference in other words dollar sign before the d and the 13 then comma that's what the comma means in my if reference uh the value what do i want the value to be then i want the value to be this percent value so do that if not comma what do i want i want you to leave it blank meaning double quotes because there's nothing in the middle that's my text format so it'll just do nothing there close it up and enter and that nothing's there because it's under so i'm going to double click the fill handle and i should see it show up down here i'm also going to add the formatting home tab number percentify and decimalize and there we have it now you could get an approximation by summing it up down here alt enter and let's pull it up to the top it guessed wrong the dancing ants Need to go up to the top so it'll be dynamic and then let's percentify this one home tab number percentify we get the 1.78 which is not the same thing we got over here you would think what this would be the more correct calculation because you can't just sum it up because we're talking about the area under the curve but now that we have this we would like to add this to our graph so that we can get that pictorial representation so i'm going to go back to my graph over here and say we want to add another data set so i'm going to click on it go to my chart design up top my data up top i'll pull this over here so i can see it a bit better and then we want to be pulling up this data on this side so i'm going to add a whole nother data set i'm going to name it with that dynamic name that we put up top so here it is fancy name being added and then the data set i'm going to remove this click here it's a little finicky on this one so be careful you want to put it up top to pick up the whole thing and then control shift down make sure you don't pick up the total so shift up so there it is and then okay so there we have it and so there you have it it draws that kind of line it's a little bit kind of wonky because we don't have a whole lot of data that we used to populate this but it gives you that line so i'm going to say okay and there we have it so i'm going to say okay and there is our line uh over here at the 79 so we have the 79 you can imagine pictorially that that orange bit then is representing this uh this part which should have an area under of 120 right we could see the pictorial representation so now i could say all right let's see if i can add a legend to it clicking on the plus button legend so this blue is the p of x the whole thing 
and then the orange is uh, the P of X greater than or equal to 79. Now remember, if this P of X is greater than or equal to 79, we also know that the blue one is gonna be kind of, you know, the inverse, everything less than or equal to, uh, in essence, the 79, right? Uh, but, so we can use this one graph then to answer other questions as well, such as uh, what, what would it be less than or equal to? It would be the blue side. But we might want a whole nother, another graph to, to represent other questions uh, as well. So, so the next thing that we might have is, for example, a type of question where it says P of... Well, before we do that, let's actually also add uh, the Z-score to this. So I want to add the Z-score, which I can do now. So if I like double click on this, for example, it should open up the format data and then I'm in this area to the right and we have the primary and secondary and we want to have a secondary axis. So I'm going to have a secondary axis because I want to add another X so I can show not only the X's but also a Z. So I'm going to say, okay, it's a little off kilt right now, but I think it will still be okay. So I'm going to delete this bit. I don't, I don't need this. So I'm going to click on that and delete it. That brings it back to uh, looking correct, at least. And then we're going to go up to my data up top. And on this second data set, I'm going to use a different, a different X. So I'm going to pick it up by selecting the edit. And then I'm going to say the X is going to be named or the Z. So that's the name that we... Oh, I need just the range, the range. So that's going to be from here down to here no total that looks good so i'm going to say okay make sure it picks up you can see it picking it up over here so that looks correct i'm going to say okay it doesn't look like anything changed until i hit the plus button and in this x axis i'm going to hit the arrow and then say i want a secondary horizontal and so there it is it picks it up closing up this little green now i'd like to bring this down to the bottom you could leave it there it looks fine but I'm going to bring it down to the bottom because I'm used to that. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm over here in the format and I'm going to go down to the labels. And then I'm going to say to the label position, bring it low. Bring it low, swing low, swing. I don't know why I had that song came into my head. So there it is. So now we can see that the Z, we can see this X by the Z position as well as uh, the X. And oftentimes you'll have questions in terms of X's or in terms of a Z score. Okay, so now we might have other questions. We might say, okay, well, what if we said uh, P of X is less than, less than or equal to, and let's do the 79 just to show that here. Now, again, you could use kind of the same graph because you could say, well, if P of X is, is less than uh, or equal to 79, it would be like the inverse of this, which would be kind of the blue. But we might want a whole nother graph. So let's make this dynamic first. I'm going to say, let's put the 79 out here so I can change that. And then it'll change this label automatically. Double click in the label, go into the end of it, equals quotes from the P all the way to the equals to make it a text field and then shift or an and to connect it. And then that 79, I'm gonna highlight it and replace it, putting my cursor down onto that cell. You can't see the 79, but it's in there. And then I'm gonna tie that to with an and, a text field, quote, to close up the brackets, end quote, and enter. So now I can change that 79 to 80 or something, and it changes automatically. All right, so the calculation then is going to be, it's going to be a cumulative. You can see it here up to and up to the, so it's basically the blue bit, right? So I can say, well, this is going to be equal to the uh, norm.dist. And then the X is now going to be the 79 comma. And the mean is going to be this. And then uh, comma, the standard deviation, we calculate it here comma cumulative yes true or just one and enter let's uh format it home tab number percentify it add some decimals and uh we're out at 100 percent. that seems awfully high let's bring this down to 79 
right? And so there it is. So, and we can also see it this way. I can say this equals the same one. Uh, and this is going to be equal to one minus this number, right? And, uh, and then hold on a sec. Let's percentify it. Home tab, number group, percentify. And we get something slightly different because it's right on the line there of the 79. If I double clicked on this one and I changed this to this minus 0 0.1 or 0 0.1, right? Then I get a little bit closer, but I'm going to keep it where it is because what I would like to do now is to practice plotting another graph like that. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make another column and I'm going to make it dynamic by picking up this here. So now this is going to be P of X uh, is uh, less than or equal to, in this case, 79. And of course, again, we can change it by changing this dynamic field, but I'll keep it there for now. Let's make this black and white. So I'm going to go font tab, black and white, and let's then uh, center it. And so, so now I, I actually want to see it on a different graph this time. So I'm going to actually pick up another graph and let's start at our same starting point. I'm going to pick up the P of X and shift up so I don't pick up the 100 insert it's an area graph charts drop down i'm going to pick up an area graph down here that's the one and then i'm going to delete the title of it and let's build this in the same format so i'm going to adjust the x's so i'm going to go to the chart data data select and choose the edit I'm going to replace the X's over here with my X's. Control shift down, shift up to not pick up the total. Okay, there they are. That looks good. So I'm going to say, okay. Then I'm going to add this column this time. So I'm going to put my cursor here. I'm going to go chart design, data. And then I'm going to say select data. Let's go to then the add. So I'm going to add data. The series is going to be this name remove this stuff down here and i'm going to click on this little icon put my cursor up top so i can make it dynamic picking up the whole column Control shift down and uh, uh let's hold on a second it uh, went too far you've gone too far what are you doing well hold on i don't have anything in here yet i can't do it so i'm going to select the data <laughs> and then i'll set enter and then i'll say okay Nothing's there yet because I haven't added the data, which would be useful. So I'm going to say, okay, what am I going to do to get the data? I'm going to say using our logic test again, because I want to pick everything that is going to be less than the 79. So this time we want to say less than and including. So I'm going to be picking this one up. You can see that's where kind of the uh, overlap is. So we're going to take uh, that up to there. So you would think it would be like this amount. 99.44 uh, if I was to add it up that way it doesn't tie out to these numbers over here because the area under the curve so this is going to be equals if brackets and I'm going to say if this number is less than or equal to this 79 this number then comma what do you want you to do? I want you to pick up this number then, the related percentage. But if not, comma, that's what the comma means. I want you to leave it blank, double quotes to leave it blank. Closing up the brackets and enter. So it puts that in there. I'm going to percentify it, home tab, number group, percentify, adding some decimals, double clicking on the fill handle to bring it down. It doesn't work because I didn't do some absolute references. Double clicking on it again, everything that's outside of my area of work, this number in particular, uh, D15, I need to make absolute, putting my cursor D15, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the D and the 15, enter. Let's try it again, put my cursor on it, double click and taking it down. So there it is. So now you can see it brought it down. It gives you this little tweak down here so you can see it's quite small on the upper end because we don't have a whole lot of data, but you get the idea. I can make this, uh, let's make this something different now. Let's make it 76. So now the orange area represents this. I can add the legend plus button and say I want the legend 
and boom so now we have that there and so so now we have that as a dynamic and the orange is representing this column so we can also add the z-score of course too so i could say let's double click on this secondary access and then close this up delete this stuff don't need it and then in my data up top i want to go to the second bit and now delete this or change it to be picking up my z scores and okay and boom and bam and now i need to hit the plus button and axes add the secondary axis and there it is plus to get it off of that again turn that off and then double click on this bit i'm going to bring it to the bottom under the labels and then bring it down to the bottom por favor if you please and then lower it and boom so we can do that so now we've got that graph now the last one you might say okay well what if i what if i want a between graph so there's a couple different ways we could do it but if i'm going to ask a question what if it's between this or that right i'm going to bring this one down here okay well then we can do another we could do another one if we wanted to and say i'm going to make one where it's going where i have let's say a lower and an upper to get between right so now i'm going to say something like uh p of x and i like to do it this way this is probably not the best way to write it but i say i like to say that x is going to be greater than or equal to let's let's say it's going to be greater than equal to 72 and uh 72 and uh less than less than or equal to 79 something like that I'll make this a little bit larger so that might not be the most perfect way to write it but that's what kind of makes sense to me right so it's going to be between uh 72 and 79 including 72 and 79 so i'm going to say the lower bit is 72 upper bit is going to be 79 is the, is the point if i want this to be my title up top i want to make it dynamic so i can change the lower and upper double clicking on this i'm going to say equals quotes from all the way from here to here i want to be text so quotes and then i'm going to say and an and to tie it together i'm going to select the 72 and pick it up from here so it picks up that cell and then this and i want to be text so i need another and and, and then i'm going to tie it to the text quote of the and so one and is is code and the other and is text so i'm going to tie it to and uh uh actually the, i want the and all the way over to this end quote as text and then another and to tie it to the 79 which i want to be referenced not as a hard-coded number but this upper cell and then i also want to tie that to with another and and then quotes around the last bit of text which is closing up the brackets so that's awfully kind of confusing looking but it works beautifully and if you do it a few times it kind of uh you kind of get you kind of get the hang of it right so if i was going to do that with a with a, a calculation here it would look something like this we'd have to say I'm, i've got to make i've got to take everything up to the upper limit minus everything up to the to the lower limit and so i'm going to say this equals norm dot dist and the x is going to be on the upper limit 79 comma mean 73.7 comma standard deviation 2.3 comma cumulative yes or one closing it up minus norm dot dist tab x lower x 72 comma mean 7370 comma uh, standard deviation 2.3 comma cumulative yes or one and close it up and enter let's percentify home tab number percentify adding some decimals and so there we have it 
Now, if I wanted to, to graph that, I'm going to say, all right, let's say this is going to be equal to my dynamic reference over here. And then I'll center that home tab uh, alignment, center, wrap it, font group, black, white. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to say, okay, so, so now with my... I, instead of trying to do an if function that picks both those up, I'm just going to take these two and I'm going to say that that I want you to, well, let's do it this way. One way you can do it is you could you could try to plot the lower, you can plot the upper, and then you can try to sum them up uh, only if something is showing, if it's greater than or equal to zero or something like that with an if function. Uh, or I could do I could do something like this. I can say this is going to be equals if brackets, and then there's basically two tests that need to be met. So I'm going to embed now an and function. So now I've got an and within my if, so I can have my two tests. So if I'm going to say and then and the logic test is going to be this uh, number, the x. If that. Uh, is let's say we're going to say that has to be uh, less than or let's say it has to be greater than or equal to the lower bit the 72 and so we're going to say a comma and we also want to say that this number over here is going to be less than or equal to the upper limit 79 that closes up our and. So we've embedded those two conditions in the if using the embedded and. And then what? Then I'm going to put a comma. What are we going to do if that's true? Well, if that's true, then you pick up the P of X. And then comma, if it's not true, we just want you to leave it blank, which is two quotes. And then close it up and enter. So nothing's there. If I double, well, now I'm going to double click on it again. I need absolute references for these two cells, which is on in columns D and E. So anything on D and E. So this one F4 and then this one F4, making them absolute dollar signs before the letters and numbers enter. And then double clicking on the fill handle to pull it down. And then you can see it basically adds up that middle bit. Let's highlight this whole thing, home tab, number group, percentify, adding some decimals. All right, so now let's just do another, once again, our, our chart. So I'm gonna start the same way, control shift down, shift up, insert charts, drop down here. We want an area chart. I'm gonna pull that to the side, remove the title going to scroll to the side a bit. I'll do this a little bit faster since we've seen this a few times. I'm going to go to the data up top, go to the X's, select the data. I want to fix these X's. Selecting this one, I'm going to pick my X's, control shift down, shift up, and all right, and okay. So boom, the X's have been entered. Then I'm going to pick up my second data set, go into the charts data again adding the second data set, which is going to be named this, my dynamic name, removing this bit. I'm going to select this item. So I want to pick up the whole range, even though there's only data in the middle of it and say, okay. So there it is. It pulled it in. Okay. Boom. That looks good. And then I'm going to, so now you can see that this is the upper limit. So right, this is in the middle there even though it looks like it's almost kind of picking up the whole bit because of that triangle but that's fine so now i'm going to say all right let's double click on this one giving us our format data series make our secondary uh, axis closing this up i'm going to remove this bit because i don't need it and then i'm going to go into my data again second data set changing the secondary axis to be the z score control shift down and okay it didn't pick it up notice that it's a little finicky sometimes because i could see it didn't do it what did you do excel close that up i'm going to select this it's a little finicky control shift down i'm not going to get upset what did you do excel why did you even do that man why did you even do this like i don't even know you anymore excel okay don't be too hard on excel 
we're gonna say there it is so then so then i can hit the plus button and then hit the arrow secondary horizontal and then okay and then i'm gonna and then i'm gonna pull this down to the bottom double clicking on it labels and bring it down to the bottom lower and so now we've got this between one which is dynamic because if i make the upper limit let's say let's say we make it between 74 or something like that now you can see it basically gives you that between so you might not need all of these graphs uh to 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 represent your data one would probably be fine but you do want to be able to build them so that you can represent your data pictorially because it's it's often quite useful uh to do so let's just do some formatting on this now i'm going to select this whole thing i'll just make it uh i'll make it home tab number select a bucket let's make it blue let's make it bordered so there we have that and then i can select all of this stuff let's make it home tab font group blue and oh not white undo undo control z let's border that and we could sum these up if we want to alt equal just to sum up our totals alt equal may as well alt equal oh not that way what are you doing what are you doing excel uh you want to pick the stuff above you know what i wanted don't play don't play dumb don't play dumb with me excel i see what you're doing i see what you're doing think you're so smart but i can tell all right so there we go now we should have a space between our table over here i feel like so i'm going to put my cursor on column f right click and insert and then i'm going to clear the formatting in here just so i have that interim white uh bit so they're not all connected together with my table i'm going to go back to my home tab and make some borders around that and so that will help you to basically answer questions and look at it pictorially whether you're giving x's or whether you're given z scores uh and then you can and then you can draw and you can draw various graphs even if you can't draw them uh by hand let's do a quick review on the spelling did i how was how's the spelling looking it's perfect it can't be spell check must be wrong but there it is it's good enough 